Hello, welcome back to the Spider's Web, and in this video we're painting Emir from Mythic Battles Ragnarok. We're starting off with Deep Blue. This is going into all the undersides. It's the darkest colour we'll be using in this in this miniature. Um, and uh, we want to use this for the shadow areas. Because we don't want to make him too dark, but by the same yardstick, you know, we don't want to make all the shadow areas too light. <laughs> right, so we're making a nice gradient effect all around the body so that we can see where light is hitting and where it isn't. So we're going from deep blue to a much paler blue and onwards up to white. And you can see that we have a, a spur head on that uh, block of wood. I'm not going to be continuing to paint it in this video. Um, I decided against it, so that's the last you're going to see of that. Now, as I said, we're going to go from deep blue into a paler blue now, and that paler blue, appropriately enough, um, seeing it's uh, Mythic Battles Ragnarok, uh, is Viking blue. <laughs> yes, Viking blue we're using. Um, now, Mythic Battles Ragnarok, as you may or may not know, is the follow up game to Mythic Battles Pantheon. And this mini um, is uh, was done on the Mythic Battles Pantheon um, version 1.5 Kickstarter campaign with the updated rule system and everything. And uh, Mythic Battles Ragnarok has not yet uh, made an appearance on Kickstarter. It will be doing so over the next couple of weeks. Apparently it's going to be starting the 20-something of uh, March. So, at the date of this video being uploaded, it's not yet um, made an appearance on Kickstarter, but if you're watching in some time in the future, then obviously it's been and gone, probably, possibly. Who knows, it may still be on, depending on when you watch it. <laughs> oh dear, these video things are quite tricky when you're trying to pinpoint something. Anyway, um... So this one is—is uh, this still the Viking blue? Or have we changed. Yeah, still the Viking blue. Um, well, we're trying to get everything done to make it look icy. Um, so now we're changing the blue colour to troglodyte blue, which is a bit paler than the Viking blue. And uh, so we're trying to make it look icy and be. Um, Oh, what's I'm trying to say? I'm trying to make it look paler and paler as we go around the body so it looks as though the sunlight is hitting certain parts and making it brighter while the areas that isn't being hit by the sun is darker, obviously. Um, <clears throat> so that's what we're trying to do here. And at this precise moment I noticed some um, mold lines, so I'm scraping it off with a Stanley knife blade simple job on this one and the problem is it's so angular you miss them unless you look closely so <clears throat> um, just carry on a little bit with this troglodyte blue and then we'll move over to our final blue color for this particular mini um, which is a very very nice gray blue actually it's a very pale gray blue and uh, that will be coming up next. Let's see, found more. Um, watch my call it's all planes there. So I'll just rinse out the airbrush and we'll change the colour. As you can see, this troglodyte blue is still drying, so we'll just give it a few seconds to dry. It doesn't take, doesn't take long at all, it's uh, acrylic paint, obviously. And all of these, as you may have noticed, are. Um, army painter and this blue is ice storm which is again appropriate for the kind of mini we're doing because <coughs> this if it was D&D this would be an ice giant <laughs> <coughs> so we're trying to cover all the top upper areas of the mini with this to indicate that the sun or whatever light there is is um, actually striking this mini at those points and uh, so I'll be coming back and doing one further blast with uh, white 
um, just to make it even more brighter. Um, but yeah, we're just trying to make it look like a, a nice, not nice, ice, <laughs> ice giant kind of character. And uh, just in case you don't know who Emir is, um, so we're going over with the white now. Uh, Imu is a, was a primal being who was born from the venom that dripped from the icy rivers and lived in the grassland void of Ginungagap. Um, after Emir was formed from the elemental drops, so too was a Dumbler, a primeval cow, whose milk Emir fed from. Emir birthed the male and female from the uh, pits of his arms and his legs together bore a six-headed being. Uh, now changing a little bit and we're doing the straps, metal straps around his torso and upper arms and thighs and we're doing this in rough iron. And this is a very long drawn out job so uh, I've cut a little bit and just put a little fade in so we do jump because it's, it is a long and boring process even in high speed like this is. Anyway, um, as far as Emir goes uh, the brother gods Odin, Vili and Ve killed Ymir and created the earth from his flesh, he created the oceans from his blood, the mountains from his bones, trees from his hair, the clouds from his brains and from his skull the heavens and from his eyebrows the middle realm in which mankind lives, Midgard. Dwarves were given life by the gods from Ymir's flesh and blood of the earth and sea. So there we are, that is uh, Ymir, he, uh, basically the Norse version of uh, Kronos, I think it is. I believe that Kronos was, uh, if I remember rightly, Kronos was the father of Zeus and Zeus killed him and uh, the earth became, or the earth grew from the body of Kronos and uh, basically it's the same, similar storyline kind of thing. Because um, uh, Zeus, not Zeus, um, Odin, Vilit and Ve are the children of Ymir, if I remember rightly. <clears throat> so yeah, we're very close to finishing the straps. Um, now I'm also going to do the helmet on his head. And the thing is I've knocked his head off. But I'm just doing the skull cap of the helmet. I'm not doing the horns. I want to leave the horns as being part of Emir because I, I don't like the look of the images I've seen which have the horns painted in the metallic colours. So that's why I'm doing that. <coughs> so unfortunately I've gone off camera with this because um, I wasn't paying much attention. Oh well. Now we're getting some mid white, uh, sorry pure white, matte white sorry. Um, and we're also getting another colour as well which is a sandy colour. I can't quite remember what that one was. Desert sand, I think. And with the desert sand, we're going to be doing the teeth and tusks of Ymir, just to give it a little bit of colour difference and a little bit of, a bit more interest in the head, because we want the head to be the focal point of this. And that's why I'm just going to add a, a little bit of difference. And after that, we're going to go over the um, what do we call it? After we've done that, we've gone over the teeth and tusks with white, and we're also going to go over the fingernails here with white as well. Um, <clears throat> and we're also going to add a little bit of white to the tops of some of the bigger bits of ice. Now we're adding a, a dry brush of white all over. The character to bring out the details that have been lost as, uh, when you look at it it's it is quite a very detailed mini and if you're not careful you can lose the details if you don't add uh, like a dry brush or something to bring out those lovely details because it's everywhere on this mini there's texture so that's basically what we're doing now we're just adding the a dry brush to bring out the texture make it look like it's ice Big chunks of ice 
and possibly rock underneath the ace, I don't know. Um, after that, we're going to be using a little bit of, I think it's shining silver. And we're going to do the same thing, but over the uh, rough iron that we painted on the metal straps. We're also going to do the rock, great big rock that he's leaning on. Um, just to bring out on the detail in that as well. <clears throat> as you can see, it's all looking really, really icy now. Just touching up some areas of the steel uh, metal straps that um, I caught with the dry brush. <clears throat> and if I thought I'd done the dry brush before I did the straps, but never mind. So we're going to be using shining silver now. All of these are, as you might be able to see, um, your painter paints. Um, I do use um, Vallejo's model uh, mahogany just to go around the base later on. But um, I didn't want to do this, these ones in black rim on the base. I decided on a dark brown. I do quite like a dark brown base, a rim on a base. I used to do it quite on all of the bases. And I don't know whether I've done them on uh, Pantheon, I can't remember. Oh, never mind. <laughs> and now some gold. And the gold, we're just going to go over these bands on the helmets just to make them stand out a little bit more. Just a touch more detail. It just makes it come, just makes it pop a little more. There we are. So that's it for this stage. And on to stage three. Back into deep blue and we're going to go into his mouth as you may have noticed from the um, me pointing to it. <laughs> um, now it's quite a watery, I've done it as like a thick glaze shall we say. Um, and now we're taking some pure red and some matte white and we're mixing those together to get a little bit of a pinky colour and into that as well, into that pink we're going to be adding a touch of blue just to take off some of the brightness and this colour we're going to add to the ridges that are inside the mouth just to give it yet more interest and one thing I have forgotten to do is the eyes um, I totally forgot about the eyes until um, I got round to uh, doing the voiceover for these videos so I'm going to have to go back and do that and all I'm going to do is a glowing effect with a little bit of very dirt, uh, very pale green. Now I've got some um, grease, uh, grease proof paper, I've got a brush and I've got some super glue. What the hell am I doing with this? Well I've decided to try and do some long strands of grass. So I'll get some super glue on the grease proof paper, get the brush snip some of the bristles off not quite enough glue there and stand the brush strands in the super glue it's this seemed like a good idea at the time unfortunately it's not the right kind of bristle um, I'm not quite I'm not very happy with the bristles even after trying to trim them down and make them look a little rougher they were just too upright. Uh, Try a little accelerator and uh, it works, it's all stuck together, There's nice clumps there. Give it a little bit of, an, uh, of a haircut and see how it looks. The problem is, as I said, I wasn't happy with the type of bristles. You really want the incredibly cheap, crappy, brown coloured um, artist brushes. You know, the ones you can get for 256 brushes for a tenner. You know, that kind of thing. Um, that's how I'd like to have done it. But again, I wasn't happy with the style of the brush. So I decided to use some um, winter grass tufts from Army Painter. And we'll get some of them on. And I'm not sure whether I should have done this step now or should have... Um, done this after I put the snow effect on which I'm going to be doing shortly and I should I think have painted the the 
all over the top of the base in a brown colour before I put the snow effect on as well but ah well never mind first time I've done anything like this so what the heck so I'll just put some tufts down wherever you want them and then we'll start doing the snow effects now I've made this myself and that's how it's looking so far but first of all we'll get some um, Vallejo mahogany I will just paint around the base um, just so I can see where we're working because <laughs> it's all building up it's all blending in together with it all being similar colours so I'll put that to colour around the base so I've got something to frame so we get a little pot and a stirrer and we get some Mod Podge no exact measurements on this just pour some in and then we get some uh, baking powder baking soda whatever you want to call it pop some of that in spill it all over the place some medium grain gel from um, Gal uh, Galeria bang some of that in as well what the heck you know there's nothing spoiling um, and then just to make sure it's white uh, we'll oh, add a little bit of water in just to get it a bit more malleable and just to make sure it's white we'll put some titanium white Galeria painting it's the only white I've got to hand and that little stirrer thing isn't doing the job properly so we'll get a wooden dowel and give it a good mix around and then we'll start delicately applying this with a trowel all over the top of the base um, we don't want to cover the we want to cover the base but we don't want to cover the grass tufts which is one of the reasons I'm thinking I should have probably put the grass tufts on after applied this snow texture and allowed it to dry now I have not a clue whether this snow texture is going to be strong enough or will last um, as far as I'm concerned if it's if it dries properly and it's solid enough I'm happy if it discolors slightly I can always go over it with whites later on that isn't a problem but just in case because I've got baking soda in the once I've finished this properly I'm going to be going over it with a gloss varnish and then with a matte varnish to take the shine off and that hopefully should protect it from discoloration so we're going as I said all around the base I'm trying to keep it off the edge of the base but it's not terribly easy to, thing to do with this little spreader thing I'm using so when I get it around the edge I just wipe it off with my finger um, now considering the big beastie is tr uh, striding through the snow there's obviously going to be some snow on his feet and uh, so I'm just going to splatter his feet with some um, that's why I've not actually painted his toenails white yet I'm also going to splatter it all over, his, all over the rock as well just to make it look as though it is actually snow that is falling not just freshly fallen um, I'm trying to get it to look as though it is like it is walking through the snow as well as it's uh, but as well as walking through the snow it's, it's, it is actually snowing so I'm actually adding uh, snow to everything um, I'm adding it to uh, his back the rock that he's leaning on everywhere I'm going to be attaching some snow I may even add some more once it's dried I'll do that off camera um, you never know anyway we're getting very close to the end of this video and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it as I say this uh, is a preview mini from Mythic Battles Ragnarok which will be coming out on Kickstarter later on in March 2021 but uh, for now as always stay safe and take care God bless and bye for now.